question. I have a different question. I get confused between duality and non-duality. So does, has Krishna ever spoken about non-duality? Like I was reading um, Advaita Vedanta and it talks about everything being Brahman and everything yeah. being one. And Bhagavad Gita, I kind of feel it's more du um, duality there. So I get confused between the two. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's so, so difficult. No, I mean, I'm just thinking how much time to take to answer this question. <laughs> so, how, how should I answer in 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Or we want to serve dinner and we can, uh, I can continue talking. This can be the last question. Okay. Yeah. But you haven't answered my question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'll try to. Um, try to keep it brief but I'll answer see I think it is uh, Max Planck or one of the prominent scientists he said that in normal life the opposite of truth is falsehood but with respect to the great truths of life the opposite of one great truth is another great truth so he was talking more in terms of quantum physics and relativity both are true although both to try to make sense of both of them together is difficult. So we could say that is what applies to the domain of spirituality also. That, 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 that there is oneness and there is personhood. Both of these are truths. And it's not that one is true and the other is false. Hmm? So the that there is an ultimate reality beyond this world that is universally accepted by all not just the Vedic to Vedantic traditions but even the theistic traditions of the world so now what is the nature of that ultimate reality so if we consider there is a spiritual reality beyond this world so now is this personal or is this impersonal hmm? Now the Advaitic idea is that everything except Brahman, non-duality is that this is Brahman and that is the only reality hmm. and everything else is illusion to various degrees. So now for example if there is a personal divinity. Hmm, so for example that could be Krishna, hmm? that is Ishwara. So their idea is even this is an illusion and you may have heard of these three modes, goodness, passion, ignorance, uh, the three coverings within material nature. So their idea is that, that when the Brahman becomes covered by the mode of goodness, it becomes Bhagwan. it becomes God. When Brahman becomes covered by Rajas, the mode of passion, it becomes the soul, the jiva. And when Brahman becomes covered by tamas, the mode of ignorance, it becomes material nature, prakriti. Hmm? Soul and material nature. Now, this particular theoretical formulation, this is not found in the Bhagavad Gita. Mm. This is not found even in the Vedanta Sutra, the, on which they generally base, they like specific this kind of idea, but this is their idea. And their idea of liberation is that we realize that Prakriti is an illusion, the Jiva is an illusion, Bhagwan is also an illusion. Mm -hmm. And nothing ex exists except Brahman. Now what they also say is that it's very difficult to realize Brahman. So. So provisionally, one may seek to link the jiva with the prakriti. So jiva with Bhagwan, and this is the process of bhakti. Mm -hmm. So that way, a person can come out of material nature, and as a person comes closer and closer away from the grip of material nature, closer and closer to Bhagwan, 
then that person will realize initially you can worship Bhagawan. So sometimes even the Advaitic tradition, the non-dual tradition, they may also practice bhakti. But their idea is ultimately I my sense of I-ness is an illusion. The idea of God's personhood is an illusion, and there is only Brahman. Hmm? So in one sense they call themselves as transtheistic. We accept theism and we go beyond theism. Now again, all these ideas, there is no explicit scriptural basis for them. These are these are formulations and in its own way the philosophy can seem quite attractive mm -hmm. but when it comes to scripture there is a problem and another point is that from logical perspective also if Brahman is all that exists then how did Maya even come into existence and how did all this Jiva, Ishwara, Prakriti how did it all form about that question remains unanswered now there is another way of looking at it that there is an ultimate reality and that ultimate reality has multiple aspects to it. So there is a personal aspect to it and there is an impersonal aspect to it and there is an intermediate aspect to it also which is partly personal partly not personal. So this is called as Bhagawan, the impersonal is called as Brahman or Brahma Jyoti, the effulgence and this is called as the Paramatma. Now in the Bhakti tradition, the impersonal is also acknowledged as real hmm? and somebody can pursue the impersonal and they can also attain the impersonal. Hmm? Now, the, in the Bhagavad Gita, there are many places where Krishna categorically emphasizes that that the person is the highest. So, for example, 7.7, .7, he says there is no truth beyond me, mattaha parataram na anyat. Or, for example, 15.19, he says, those who know me, they are enlightened. Mm -hmm. And you could go in 10.8, it says that everything comes from me. So everything includes, nowhere in the Gita says, Krishna does, in the Gita does Krishna say, or nowhere does the Gita say that, there is some truth beyond Krishna that is to get it. Krishna talks about my nature, but this nature refers to generic spiritual nature, it doesn't refer to something beyond him. So the Gita clearly is personalist. Now having said this, the Gita does not reject impersonalism. In the Gita, impersonalism is approached in two different ways. Now, the terms themselves have not been used in the Gita, uh, but these terms have been used in the later tradition. The two, there's these two different approaches are, one is in 9, 11, 12, and the other is in 12.2 um, to 4, or rather 3 to 4. Hmm? So, in 9, 11, 12, uh, Krishna talks about those who consider the personal to be an illusion and he says such people are an illusion avajananti mamudha manushim tanmashrutam so this is technically called as mayavad hmm? and this is a widespread form of what we call a non dualism or advaitavad but that is not the only form now there is other where the impersonal is the individual preference. That means the divine may have a, the ultimate reality may have a personal aspect but I don't really care for it. I want to go toward the impersonal. And Krishna is fine with that. Yes, they will also attain me, he says. But it is a difficult process. It is clay show dhiktras sham. You talk about 12.5 also. It's a difficult process because to have nothing to contemplate on, to go beyond all form, all personality, all qualities, it's quite difficult. So this, you could say, this is accepted. This is rejected. So, in the Gita, so the if you consider Advaita Vad, see the term Advaita literally means non-dual. Now, at one level, the person and the impersonal, they are all once, it's one ultimate reality. It's not that these are different realities. 
इट इज द सेम रियालिटी बट इज परसीव्ड एट परसीव टू डिफरेंट डिग्रीज आई वन एग्जाम्पल टू कंक्लूड दिस पॉइंट Have any of you heard of this thing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, if there's a gulab jamun, now so not, not everyone knows. Not everyone knows. Okay, it's a it's an Indian dessert. Mm, if you haven't tasted it, then your life is wasted. <laughs> <laughs> okay so now this has broadly three characteristics first is it has its form it's a it's attractive spherical form in it's in it comes with its own juice or whatever you want to call it it's at its form or in you can say its shape then it has its fragrance smell and then it has its taste now each of them are attractive so suppose somebody lives in a prison been sentenced to jail and the jail happens to be next to a sweet shop and in that jail they can in that sweet shop gulab jamun is being made and the smell goes over the wall to the prisoner and the prisoners smell this but the smell the fragrance is all that they were ever experienced they have never experienced anything more than the smell so suppose now they don't even know what the object is they experience only the smell and say they give it the name gulla hmm? what is this object with a beautiful smell oh it's a gulla hmm? now say suppose that there's a, there's a, on that sweet shop itself that sweet shop is next to the jail but that sweet shop is also on the road on the other side and so there's a poor man who goes by that road and there is a glass wall and every day he can see the gulab jamun he can see this object now the smell is coming he also seeing it but he has never tasted it so for this person there is smell plus plus sight the shape you could say and say he gives a name to it called jamu hmm and now he is also experiencing the same object but it's not a complete experience the object is the same now suppose somebody is a customer they go into the shop and then they eat the gulab jamun so for them there is smell plus shape plus taste and they come to know this is a gulab jamun so now it the same object so the gulla is not a lesser object than the gulab jamun the jamu is not a less object it is a it's a different level of realization of that object so similarly it is said that the ultimate reality has three aspects sat chit and anand hmm? that there is a eternal existence and there is consciousness there is awareness and then there is anand there is loving reciprocation so now when only the sat aspect of the it ultimate reality is realized that means the person understands that there is beyond this world where there is constant change there is some unchanging substratum to existence that understanding of that unchanging substratum to existence is called as brahma jyoti mm. so the the brahma jyoti is like the jam it's the same ultimate reality but one aspect of it is realized when sat plus chit that means you understand it's not just it's not just one undivided reality you know there is conscious awareness that reality is governing this world that reality there is that reality is observing is conscious this is the parmatma realization Hmm. now brahman and parmatma are the same they are not two different things but it's just a, a a different level of realization and then here see the brahma brahma jyoti is just as existence but now that existence is connected with this world also that existence overseeing this world also but then further does that existence have any life beyond 
its interaction with this world beyond overseeing this world so one of my friends is a judge and it was his lifelong passion to become a judge and he told me if, if being a judge is what I had to do 24 hours a day I would go mad so if the ultimate reality is overseeing the world is judging people and all that but does the ultimate reality not have, a, have their own its own personal life does the ultimate reality have a self-existence separate from the functional roles in this world so that self-existence is the source of anand joy and that is the bhagav that is realizing that is the bhagavan aspect of realization here one understands that Actually, the divine is all pervading, the divine is overseeing everything, but independent of this world, the divine has the ultimate reality, the spiritual reality has a self existence. So, in the divine abode, God reciprocates love with his devotees, and that is the that is the self existence independent of this existence. So, this is the realization of the Gulab Jamun is completeness. So, this is what the Bhagavad Gita prompts us towards. So the impersonal realization is not incorrect at all. It is also a valid realization. It's an incomplete realization. So the incomplete realization is also accepted as a very valued and exalted realization. So just to understand that there's something eternal beyond this world and to focus on that and to strive for that is not easy. But the problem comes when the incomplete is considered to be complete. And not only complete, the only complete thing. That is when that becomes problematic. So that is Mayavad which is not accepted by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. Okay? Thank you. That was great explanation. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to your service. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.